Welcome back to another Madden 21 rebuild I have for you guys here today. Today, it's going to be another fantasy style rebuild, this time of the Carolina Panthers. Really quickly though, if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, if this is your first time visiting over here, and if you enjoy watching Madden 21 franchise content, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed this video in particular, it would be really appreciated as well if you could hit that like button down below. Uh, but before we actually talk about the lineup, I just want to mention something. So if you go into free agency now with the newest roster, you can see that Colin Kaepernick is back in the game. It's cool to see Colin Kaepernick, you know, finally back in a Madden game. Uh, he's an 81 overall, which I think is higher than his previous overall and, you know, the most recent Madden he was a part of. Um, but he has a custom, like, free agent uniform. I think it looks really cool. And then he also has, like, a little custom background thing there, where it's just a number seven. It's different from, you know, Josh McCown has the, like, original free agent uniform. And then Josh McCown also has the NFL, you know, logo as his background. But yeah, Colin Kaepernick is back in the game here. 81 overall. Has some good stats. Now, I don't think I'm going to sign him in this video because I don't really want him to start on the Panthers here. I kind of want to see what Teddy Bridgewater can do. Um, but maybe in a rebuild down the line, we can go ahead and sign Kaepernick. And I also want to give other teams an opportunity to sign him and have him start somewhere. It'd be cool to see him win like MVP or something crazy. Like, I don't know if he's going to be good in this game. Depends what team he goes to, really. Uh, but yeah, he has good stats, can move around as well. It's just nice to see him back in a Madden game again. But now we can go over the roster. So, you know, I mentioned this briefly, but Teddy Bridgewater is the starting quarterback. He's a 75 overall with star development. Now, he's going to regress at some point in this rebuild. So I really don't know if I'm going to keep him on the team this entire time. I might. It kind of depends on how well he plays. Uh, but Teddy Bridgewater is not a bad quarterback. I I certainly think he's capable of being a starter in the NFL still. You know, he's shown that in the past for sure. He's definitely not bad, but we'll see how he does in the game here for us. Christian McCaffrey is the best running back in this entire game. He's a 99 overall. Superstar X Factor, absolutely deserving of both of those. He is insanely good with the ball in his hands. 92 speed, 93 acceleration, elite agility, carrying, ball carry vision, and juke move, and change of direction. He's also one of the best receiving backs in the entire NFL. 82 catching, 83 short route running. Uh, he has good catch in traffic, good spec catch as well. Good pass blocking even. 69 pass block isn't all that bad, I feel. Uh, but yeah, he's a really good player. Of course, he's a really good player. It's Christian McCaffrey. Uh, DJ Moore is this team's number one receiver. This receiving core has a ton of speed on it. We'll get to, you know, some of the other guys in a bit. But DJ Moore is fast. 93 speed, 93 acceleration, 91 catching. Really good route running ability as well. Good agility and jumping. And then Curtis Samuel here at the number two. Um, Robbie Anderson was here. I just moved Curtis Samuel up because I think he's going to be the two and the slot for me. Uh, but yeah, Curtis Samuel is very fast. I think the fastest of the group here 95 speed 93 acceleration 84 catching really good agility for him as well and then robbie anderson has like 93 speed he has 94 speed um but he's a good deep threat option but I don't think he's going to play all that much here for us because I want to progress DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel. Robbie Anderson, not bad, but he's older than these guys by a decent bit. And then on the offensive line, Russell Okung is a starting left tackle. He'll probably get traded for me just because um, he is 31 years old and only a 76 overall. He's not a bad player, but I don't think I'm going to keep him on the team. Um, they do have Greg Little backing him up. I don't know if I'm going to have Little play left tackle or left guard, um, or right guard even, but he can play somewhere on the offensive line for sure. Michael Schofield, I guess, is the starting left guard. Matt Paradis is the starting center. He's a pretty good center, 81 overall for him. John Miller at right guard, Taylor Moten at right tackle. At tight end, we have Ian Thomas and Chris Manhurts, but I think Ian Thomas is going to be the starter. I don't know if he's going to be the starter the rest of the you know rebuild here, but he's a pretty good receiving option for us. 78 catching isn't all that bad. 83 speed, good acceleration, good catch in traffic. Um, he's also very young, so he has a Lot of room to grow and then here on the defensive side no more luke keekley which is very sad i'm not even a fan of this team but i will miss luke keekley as you can see in the coach name he was really fun to watch he was incredibly good um so it's gonna be weird at not having one of the best linebackers in football on the field again but this team drafted a lot of rookies and i'm excited to see how these players progress Derek brown being the best of the bunch 78 overall one of the best rookies in this entire game hidden development trait now i wouldn't be surprised if that ends up being superstar development 90 strength 85 tackling 80 block shed 70 26 power moves, 82 acceleration. Uh, he has a really good mentor here at defensive tackle in Kowan Short. He's some veteran leadership on this defensive line. 31 years old, but he's still very, very solid. Then they have Yitor Gross Matos out of my college, Penn State. <laughs> That's where I graduated from. 84 speed, 87 acceleration, 81 strength. 82 tackling and agility, pretty good block shed and power moves as well. I expect him to develop really well. I expect Derek Brown and I expect Brian Burns to develop well too. He's only 22 years old, one year of experience, 79 overall. Uh, he's a really solid edge rusher, super fast, pretty good strength. 
uh, good finesse moves. Not the best block shed, but we can definitely work on that. Moving on to the secondary, we have Dante Jackson at cornerback number one. Uh, he's one of the faster players in this whole game. 96 speed, 93 acceleration, a really good agility and jumping. He's just a tremendous athlete. Uh, he has really good coverage ability too. It's pretty balanced. Like we can kind of do whatever we want when it comes to progressing uh, his different coverage stats. Um, but I'll probably just let the computer do whatever they want with him. That's normally what I do in these rebuilds, but he's a good player for sure. Eli Apple at number two. We have Troy Pride Jr. at number three. He's a rookie out of Notre Dame. I don't know where he's going to be playing. He might be a boundary guy. He might be the slot guy. We'll have to look into that a little bit more. Uh, Jeremy Chin is starting at strong safety. A rookie out of Southern Illinois. 70 overall for him. I think he's going to develop really well here. Usually safeties develop quite well. We'll have to see how he plays. But hopefully he can go up in development trait. That would be absolutely massive because normal to star is a huge difference. And then Trey Boston is the starting free safety. I guess we'll make him an 80 overall. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to trade him. Because, you know, he's getting kind of old. He's 28 years old, and he's probably kind of expensive, and he definitely has some good trade value. So maybe we go that route. I don't know. But he has good stats. 87 speed, 89 acceleration, 90 hit power, 87 zone coverage with that upgrade. Uh, so he's a pretty good player. I don't know if he's going to stay on the team, though. And then Shaq Thompson at middle linebacker, 26 years old for him. He's probably going to go up to superstar development at some point because that's what linebackers do in this game. To hear Whitehead is the starting left outside linebacker. And then we have Jermaine Carter uh, Jr., the starting right outside linebacker. I'm going to hop into some trades now. Of course, this is fantasy style, but I'm sure realistic rebuilds uh, will start sometime soon because I'm pretty sure Bengal made a draft class recently. But yeah, I'm not going to make that many trades i kind of just want a couple first round draft picks and then maybe a few players but i'll let you know who i'm able to get here the first trade here is going to be russell okung and trey boston to the jaguars for their first round draft pick this next trade here is going to be with the dolphins zach kerr stephen weatherly and mike davis for their first round draft pick so here's a straight up trade to hear whitehead for mac wilson he's only one overall point lower and he's far younger so he's going to develop really well here, I'd imagine. And he's probably going to go up in development trade at some point. I think I'm going to make one final trade, and then I will go over the team. And the final trade here is going to be John Miller, Seth Roberts, and Trenton Cannon for James Daniels. This will be the team here for the first season. It's a 78 overall, 81 offense, 75 defense. I think we did pretty well in terms of trading. You know, I got a couple draft picks for this year. We can build for the future. We also added James Daniels to the team. He's a very young left guard, and I think he's going to develop really well over there. And then defensively, we added another young player mac wilson neither of these players are like incredibly good at the moment but i do think they both can develop really well mac wilson will most likely go up in development trait just because outside linebackers are very glitchy in simulation uh, but this team is fairly young we have some really good players on it i expect this team to do pretty well in the next couple years but not as much this season also i've been getting asked a lot what my schemes are and what my playbooks are and whatnot the schemes i kind of just go ahead and make sure i have the one with the highest scheme fit percentage as long as it agrees with the playbook and what I mean by that is if I'm running a 4-3 playbook, I'll have the highest 4-3 defense scheme percentage, if that makes sense. And then for the playbooks, right now, I have the Titans offense and the Browns defense. The Browns have a really good defensive playbook for a 4-3, and the Titans have a really good offensive playbook. Yeah, okay, so this team's 7-1. <laughs> and the Chiefs are 6-2, so this is going to be a tough game here at Week 9. Our first loss was last week against the Falcons. All right, well, the Falcons are 5-3, and three, Saints are 3-3-1, three, three and one, and the Buccaneers are 3-5. and five. I can't believe this team is 7-1. and one. What? It's actually kind of nuts. Um, but let's quickly check out where the team is at the moment. Teddy Bridgewater has some morale. Of course he does, because, you know, the team is playing well. Curtis Samuel's up to an 83 overall. That's actually pretty nice. And then on the defensive side, Derek Brown does have superstar development. Gross Matos has star development. Okay, kind of figured both of those. Not bad at all. Those players are going to develop really well here for us then. Let me go ahead and spend my coach experience. We are going to get the weekly XP boost or whatever that is. And then probably the D-line boost. Just so those uh, two rookies down there can get as much experience as possible. Curtis Samuel needs to come back to the team. And I definitely want this to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes up in development this season. Uh, because, you know, the slot receiver with the Titans playbook. Super, super glitchy. Taylor Moten I would like back on the team. Eli Apple, not as much. But, you know, he's actually not that expensive. And he's a 77, so he's not too bad. Joey Sly, I'll bring back for the long term. Alex Arma, I'll probably give a contract to as well. And that is going to be it, I believe. So Curtis Samuel, let's start with him. He's coming back to the team for a couple seasons. Taylor Moten on a three-year contract. It does not want to come back just yet. Okay. Eli Apple, I'm going to see if I can actually bump this down, and then maybe I'll give him a contract. He is coming back to the team. Okay, I was able to bump it down a little bit for another two seasons. I don't mind that. And then Joey Sly, I'm going to give a contract to for like three years at least because he's a pretty good kicker here. He is coming back to the team. Okay, so the only one right now who we were not able to get is Taylor Moten. Oh, actually, Alex Armas here as well. I forgot about him. So let's give him like a three-year deal as well. 
he's coming back to the team too. Okay, so next week I will try to get uh, Taylor Moten back here. Taylor Moten is now coming back to the team. Okay, so I'll see you guys at the end of the year. This team ended up with a first round bye. Not at all what I expected. We finished 12 and 4, 10, 5 and 1 for the Saints, 9 and 7 for the Falcons, and then 8 and 8 for the Buccaneers. This division was actually all pretty good. Uh, but Teddy Bridgewater, okay, man. 4,500 yards, 42 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. What? No disrespect to Teddy Bridgewater, but this season is ridiculous. Rushing-wise, Christian McCaffrey was pretty good. 1,245 yards, 5.4 yards per carry. He was more than pretty good. He was very good with 6 rushing touchdowns. Receiving, Curtis Samuel was disgusting. 18 touchdowns for him. He's definitely going to go up in development trade, or at least he should. Uh, DJ Moore, over 1,000 yards, 5 touchdowns. Ian Thomas gets 9 touchdowns. But like I said, Christian McCaffrey, 300 yards. Two touchdowns, 21 receptions. No way he gets that few receptions and yards in real life. That's ridiculous. Uh, Blocking-wise, okay, the offensive line was actually really good. Greg Little letting up 11 sacks, not too bad, even though he was in the 60s this year. Defensively, we have 126 tackles for Shaq Thompson. We have 14 tackles for loss for Brian Burns, 12 for Derek Brown. We have eight and a half sacks for Brian Burns, eight for Kawan Short, five for Shaq Thompson. Gross Matos only got two and a half, three and a half for Derek Brown though. We have three picks as well for Shaq Thompson. This should be a development trade upgrade for him. At least I hope it is. Kenny Robinson Jr., the starting free safety, gets two picks. One for Jeremy Chin, Mac Wilson, Eli Apple, Dante Jackson, and Troy Pride, and Darius Taylor. Okay, defensive touchdowns. We don't have any. Safeties, we have one for Kawan Short, and then no blocked kicks. This year, we were third in the NFL on offense, and defense seems like it's at least top 10. We were 22nd, so never mind. The record was just really good because of the offense. Teddy Bridgewater at number two for MVP. That's ridiculous, man. Drew Brees is going to win that award. Nobody else from our team on this list. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, Drew Brees. Teddy Bridgewater at number two. He has to go up in development right now. Defensive Player of the Year is Khalil Mack. Shaq Thompson at number two. Really cool to see him all the way up there. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Justin Jefferson. Nobody from our team on this list. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Chase Young. Of course it is. Troy Pride at number three. Jeremy Chin at number five. Uh, Kenny Robinson at number nine. But neither of the defensive linemen on that list. All right, not the biggest deal, but, you know, still, I want those guys to develop for me. Let's advance into the divisional round just to see who we have to take on. We have to take on the Green Bay Packers. They are 9-7. and seven. Okay. Um, well, you know, the team is looking pretty good right now. It's an 82 overall. Let's upgrade the team. There's not that many upgrade points, I'd imagine. Yeah, only three. Might as well spend the coach experience. I'm not sure what I'll get. Maybe the defensive back upgrade, because I'm looking to draft some cornerbacks for sure. Linebacker upgrade actually wouldn't be bad. I'm going to go with that instead. Because, you know, I want these linebackers to be as good as possible. Because Shaq Thompson still has potential, of course, to develop. And then Mac Wilson for sure has potential. Uh, but, you know, the Packers are an 84. We are an 82. I don't really think we're going to win this game. But, you know, Teddy Bridgewater had a really dominant season. And if he continues playing like that into the playoffs, we might even make it to the Super Bowl. And we are going to lose. So I was correct. <laughs> Let's go to the Super Bowl and see who makes it. Yeah, so the Bengals made it to the Super Bowl. Interesting to see them there, and the Packers are also in this game. I'm going to check out the development upgrades now, though. Teddy Bridgewater, are you up to superstar development? Yes, you are. Curtis Samuel is up to superstar development as well. Ian Thomas is up to star. Dude, tight ends never go up in development trait, so that is awesome that he actually was able to go up. That is so cool to see. I really wish offensive linemen can go up in development trait, but I just don't think it's possible. It's really weird that that's not a possibility. Defensively, then, Mac Wilson is up to star. Kunichek? I don't know how to pronounce this guy's last name, but he's up to star as well. I'm just curious, how many tackles did he get? Because I don't think he played that much. I don't understand why it's so easy for outside linebackers to go up in development trait. He had 42 tackles, 8 tackles for loss. Like, come on, that's not good enough to go up in development trait. But Shaq Thompson had a defensive player of the year caliber season, and he is still at star. I don't understand how this game works sometimes, man. Um, but I don't think anyone else here on the defense is up in development trait. But the team is in a pretty good spot, really. Like, we have a lot of young talent still there developing super well. Yeah, we lost in the first round of the playoffs we played in, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, let me use my scouting points, and then I will see you guys in the offseason. I cannot get over how horrifically bad offensive linemen are now in these draft class. Like, Benji Spencer looks pretty good, but then look at the left guards. All the guys who are supposed to be drafted are all terrible. I kind of hate how hard it is now to find offensive linemen. I do think it was too easy last year, but now it's just like utterly impossible. Let's advance by though. 
see if the Packers can win. I think they're going to beat the Bengals. 42 to 7. They demolished the Bengals. Okay. Well, let's go into the offseason week one. We should have some money to spend. We have $20 million, so not a ton, but we can at least bring in a couple players. Alvin Kamara, of course, is the top free agent. I wouldn't mind giving either him or Kareem Hunt a really small contract just to get a good backup. Actually, no, never mind. I lied because there are a couple really good running backs in um this draft class so i'd rather go that route but really quickly why is philip Lindsay getting a contract but Kamara and kareem hunt are not no disrespect to philip Lindsay, i think he's a good runner but these guys are both better like in the game here so why wouldn't you give them a contract they're also both younger makes no sense so i don't really think i want anyone here to be honest we didn't really have all that much money now anyway so i think i'd rather um kind of just like bank on the draft and then maybe look to next year's free agency class to sign someone because i feel like the year two free agency class is usually far more stacked but i will see you guys now in the draft all right so i think this draft has potential to be an incredible draft here for us there are a lot of really good players who we should be in the range of taking but we do have the first pick which is nice because we can trade this one away most likely i don't think there's anyone who i want like super early in this class but anyway let's just see if like the raiders are offering something i'd like to get their first next year and a second this year um, that's exactly what the football team is offering. I wouldn't mind taking that, but let me see if I can get it to go through with the Raiders here quickly. Might as well try to get the second overall pick instead of the fifth, but I think with the fifth pick, I could still land the player I want first. Okay, so this first pick and then two sevenths, one this year and one next year, will get me the Raiders first round draft pick this year and next year and a second round draft pick this year. Okay, so let's see who they trade up to take. Giving away a lot to take this player, so hopefully it's worth it for them. They are going to go ahead and select a 69 overall right guard. So I definitely don't think uh, he was the best player they could have taken. There are some really good players, though, in this class, like I was saying. But I do think with this first pick, I'm going to take a cornerback, and it is not Dominic Stanley. There's another corner who looks a little bit better, in my opinion. Early first round talent for TJ Boykin. Compare that to mid first round talent for Stanley. I do think Stanley's going to be a good player, but I would rather have Boykin at the moment. He's a 76. He only has normal development, but he's still definitely uh, good enough to start on this team. Incredible acceleration. Pretty good speed. Not bad agility and jumping. Uh, his zone coverage is actually really solid. His press coverage isn't bad either. Yeah, so he's a really good player. He's probably going to be a boundary corner for us, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And now at pick number six, let's see who uh, the best player on my draft board still is, because I don't actually know who I want. I actually don't think I need this draft pick either. Like, I think I can trade this one away and still be all right. I at least want a first round draft pick this year and nobody is offering that. Okay, so this is an interesting trade. <laughs> it took me a while to figure something out, um, but I kind of like what I came up with. We are giving the Giants the sixth overall pick. I don't really need this draft pick at all. Uh, the next player I want to take is projected to go in the late first round, or maybe even second round. I don't exactly remember. Robbie Anderson and Eli Apple are also going to the Giants. Funny that Eli Apple's going back there. But I am getting the 12th overall pick in Xavier McKinney. So Xavier McKinney is going to be our franchise safety. And like I said, I don't need that sixth overall pick. I also don't need either of those players anymore uh, because there's a receiver who I really want to take in this class. I'll show you who that is at some point. But now at pick 12, we can go ahead and select another player. I think I'm going to go ahead and take a linebacker now. I don't know exactly which one I want to get. Keon Whiteside looks pretty good. Shaq Hutchins also looks pretty good. So it's between these two guys. This guy fits the scheme though, Shaq Hutchins. Um, but I might actually flex him outside. I know Keon Whiteside is a bit younger. It's weird. Like, these guys are both really good. I think I'm gonna go with Shaq Hutchins, though, just because he has a better combine grade. Welcome to the team. 72, but he has normal. Now, I knew he was going to be a late first-round talent, but I don't really care. Uh, this guy's gonna play for us, for sure. He's gonna be an outside linebacker, and I think he's going to play very well in that role. Honestly, the second-round projected players look really good in this class, so I'm very excited to take some of them. But let me just see which one I want to take right now. So, Isaiah Hardison looks incredible. Early first-round talent, late second-round projection. And then compare that to this wide receiver, Brian Scott mid third round projection early first round talent i think i'm gonna take the running back with this pick i could potentially wait to get scott um with the 28th pick in the second round because i kind of want this center jeremiah proctor early first round talent he looks really good too um but emmett burke doesn't look much worse and i just want to make sure i can get this receiver so i'm going to take the receiver with the second pick in the second round and with this pick i'm going to take isaiah hardison welcome to the team 
He's a 75 and he actually has hidden development trait. Okay. This guy is 91 speed and acceleration, really good agility, good carrying, um, a really bad catching ability, but that's fine. He's just going to be backing up Christian McCaffrey. He's not going to play all that much, um, but I still think that was a really good selection. Kind of dumb to take a running back in the first round, I guess, um, but it works here in Madden. It's really not that big of a deal. Uh, that's the Heisman winner, Julian Pierman. I was thinking about taking him, but that other running back looked a lot better. With this pick though, I think I'm going to go Brian Scott. This guy looks insane. He's a 75 and he has a normal development trait, but he's ranked number seven. He has 94 speed, 93 acceleration, 80 catching, really good route running ability, really good agility and jumping. He's a fantastic kick returner, good change of direction as well. This guy is a fantastic prospect. Okay, glad to have him on the team. He has way more potential than Robbie Anderson had, so I don't mind getting rid of Robbie Anderson to essentially uh, make room for that guy. I'm considering trading in the draft here one more time. Okay, this is a really easy trade up, giving the Lions our third defensive tackle in our second round draft pick to get pick number 41. Now here, I'm gonna take this center. He should still be available. If not, then I'll take the other guy I have. It's really not the end of the world if he gets taken. Uh, but let's see if he is here. This guy looks really talented. Early first round talent, always a player you should shoot for also there's a really good tight end in this class i don't need him now because ian thomas is actually progressing very well just wanted to point that guy out because he looks great but jeremiah proctor early first round talent and then emmett burke right has mid first round talent okay so we're going with proctor welcome to the team 77 with normal the second ranked player in this entire class really good blocking ability yeah this guy is incredibly talented i might even still take that other center and then maybe move him to guard this has been a really eventful draft so far <laughs> i have traded a lot i apologize if you don't like all the trades but this draft class had a ton of potential so i really wanted to move around in the draft a little bit that other center was selected kind of sad but it's okay let's go with clint Tompkins here 71 with normal early second round is when he was supposed to go rank number 34 Okay, so this guy could potentially start for us one day. I don't really think he will. But at least we did replace the third defensive tackle we just traded away. Uh, I think it was to the Lions, right? So now in the fourth round, let's just see who's available here. We have one left end. He doesn't really look that great, but I'm still going to take him. 66 with normal. Okay, he's really not that good. Uh, but this draft, I think, went incredibly well. We only have one hidden development trait player, which is kind of upsetting, but that's kind of what happens in this game. But we were able to land a bunch of starters, which I'm excited for. These guys should all develop. Um, super well and I think this team is going to be very good here once again uh, but let's quickly go over the draft recap we have a bunch of players in the 70s which is really nice 76 72 275s a 77 and then a 71 good picks by the computer as well we got a fifth round receiver 68 overall Matt Stevens a 66 let's check out Buckner he has normal development trait 90 speed but really good acceleration another great kick returner and then we have Matt Stevens normal development trait for him but not a bad looking linebacker at all. Let's check out the rest of this class. Who was the best player? I don't think we got that player. There's a 79 overall defensive tackle. Cyril Childress. 97 strength. This guy is insane. Okay. Let's see what his development trait is. I'm kind of sad I didn't pick this guy. He wouldn't have played this year most likely. Actually, if I drafted him, I probably would have made room. Uh, but I wasn't really looking for a defensive tackle. And he is an X factor. <laughs> okay, man. Wow. That is a really, really good player there, um, drafted by the Cowboys. When did he go? With the 13th pick. That's crazy. And then, where's that other running back? I want to take a look at him. He's a 73 overall running back going in the fourth round. The running back I'm looking for was Julian Pierman. He has hidden development trait. I mentioned he won the Heisman. Let's see if he has superstar or superstar X factor. He only has star, so he's really not that great of a player. Um, but yeah, I think this draft went well for us. It kind of sucks that the only player we got with hidden... Um, is a running back so he's really not gonna contribute too much but having a good backup um, a running back has some value here in the game at least okay so the team here for this next season is an 82 85 offense 79 defense i feel like the defense isn't actually that bad it actually went down because i switched that middle linebacker we drafted to outside linebacker and your backup middle linebacker actually does influence your overall so i think that's why it went down but it's still a pretty good defense in my opinion but anyway the offense has a bunch of superstars we have an x factor um we have a new receiver in scott we have a new running back as well uh proctor moved to right guard he went up in overall there as well so i think this team is in a pretty good spot on this side of the ball hopefully teddy bridgewater can have another mvp kind of season and then defensively i mentioned i move hutchins to outside linebacker he's a 74 overall uh the team i think is in a really good position for this next season you know like the roster isn't amazing 
only an 82 overall. They played out of their mind last year. I wouldn't be surprised if this team didn't make the playoffs, but I do think we have the pieces in line for the future, and I think this team can develop really well uh, throughout the course of this next season. But I will simulate now to the midseason mark. So we are playing worse this season, but we're still not too bad. We are 4-3 and three at the midseason mark, 4-3 and three as well for the Buccaneers. Seems like this is a pretty big game for us. Uh, the Saints are 6-2 and two and the Falcons are 2-5. and five. So we still have a lot of room to make the playoffs, of course. Now, we don't have any development traits to reveal at the moment. The only hidden development guy we selected was that running back, and he is not revealed yet. But the team is up and overall a little bit. You know, we're up to an 84. Definitely not too bad. Let's check out the linebacker. He's a 75. Xavier McKinney up to an 80. I think he went up in overall a little bit. Boykin's up to a 78 as well. So, you know, these guys are progressing quite well. Uh, we also have 4,600 coach experience. I was waiting for the receiver upgrade because these receivers are playing really well. Um, I want Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore to both be, you know, well into the 90s at some point. That would be huge. But let's go ahead and get the receiver upgrade. I can probably get the linebacker upgrade as well throughout the rest of this season. Um, but anyway, let's try to bring back DJ Moore. I certainly want him back on the team. This team's number one receiver. He's a 92 overall as well, so we definitely need to get him back. Kawan Short is interesting. I don't know if I'm going to want Kawan Short back on the team, to be honest. Maybe we throw him a contract at the end of the year. I'll see if he retires, and maybe I'll decide then. Dante Jackson, I would like. James Daniels, I would like. Matt Paradis isn't too bad right now. To Michael Pilardi, I wouldn't mind bringing back. Ian Thomas as well. Um, a lot of these other guys, though, I don't really think I need. Why do we have another kicker on the team? <laughs> we definitely don't need him, because Joey Sly is still here. But DJ Moore, let's start out with you. We have a ton of money as well. So we should be able to get these guys all back on the team. DJ Moore is joining us again. There we go. The only players who didn't re-sign with us are Dante Jackson and James Daniels. I decided not to go after Paradis right now. I'm going to see what his overall is at the end of the season and then uh, think about what to do. But Dante Jackson and James Daniels, I would like to bring back next week. Dante Jackson is coming back to the team now. That's nice to see. Let's try to get James Daniels now. James Daniels is also coming back to the team. Okay, so let's see where we are at the end of the season. We actually lost that game against the Buccaneers, which sucks a lot. Lot. it was a really close game too we lost 19 to 17 we do have a breakout player i very much doubt this is gonna happen i'll let you know if it does but if he doesn't go up in development trade i will see you at the end of the year so we actually missed the playoffs this year which really does suck we finished 7 8 and 1 we tied to the falcons last week 9 and 7 for the buccaneers 12 and 4 for the saints 6 9 and 1 for the falcons let's see the stats here how did teddy bridgewater play his second year on the team 4200 yards 25 touchdowns only and 19 picks what happened dude he is such a higher overall than he was last year and he played so much worse i think he also has a much better team around him that's kind of annoying christian mccaffrey 1100 yards just about 4.8 per carry seven touchdowns receiving wise curtis samuel was incredibly good though 112 catches 1500 yards 11 touchdowns but no one else really did all that much which does kind of suck. I don't know why this offense was so much worse this year. The offensive line, maybe, is the issue. They don't seem too bad, though. On the defense, we have 119 tackles from the rookie TJ Boykin with three picks. Okay, really good season for him. 13 tackles for loss for Brian Burns, 12 for, for Kawan Short. Eight sacks for Gross Matos. He had a good season. Six and a half for Brian Burns, six for Kawan Short as well. And then three picks for Boykin. I think I already mentioned that. Shaq Thompson got two. Jeremy Chin got two. Brian Burns gets an interception. That's cool to see an edge rusher get one. Mac Wilson, Dante Jackson, and Chris Orr um, also get an interception. We had one defensive touchdown for Dante Jackson and a safety for the rookie linebacker Hutchins. We were 12th on offense, 15th on defense. You know, this team just took a major step back. I don't understand what happened, really. Of course, nobody here for MVP. Russell Wilson's going to win that award. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Russell Wilson. I doubt we're going to see any Panthers. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Roquan Smith. Maybe we have a Panther player. We do not. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Timmy Cooper. Isaiah Hardison, though, at number two. Brian Scott at number four. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to the cornerback. Shaq Hutchins as well at number two. Not bad for that, but, you know, at least we got some progression from these rookies. The Ravens and the Packers make it into the Super Bowl. I think the Packers are going to win here once more. The Ravens end up winning 42 to 28. Let's go ahead and check out development trade upgrades and also just see the development trade of this running back. If he has like superstar or something, he's an insanely good player. He only has star, which does suck, but he's still very good. Curtis Samuel is up to a 94 with his morale boost and somehow he did not go up in development trade. How does this work, man? I don't understand. He was the receptions leader and he was also wide receiver of the year. And somehow that's not enough. It makes no sense. But his stats are ridiculous right now. 96 speed, 99 deep route running, 95 catching. It's just stupid how good of a player he is at the moment. 
Um, Teddy Bridgewater is an 81. I think he's regressing. I don't know if I want to like get a new quarterback. He played so well the first season. Like, I kind of feel like he can do that again, but I really don't know. Shaq Thompson, Mac Wilson, and Hutchins are all up in development trade. Kind of figured that would happen. Boykin is not, which does suck because he had a really good season. Um, so we're still looking to replace a couple of these guys on the defense. We do need a new defensive tackle now instead of Kawan Short. The edge rushers are still fine. A linebacking core, I think, is still fine. I could kind of use another corner. I wouldn't mind Boykin being the number three. And then safety, I could technically use an upgrade at as well. I guess we got to go spend a lot of money, make this team as good as we can. Um, but let's hop into free agency. I don't think I'm going to bring back Kawan Short. He's a great player in real life, but in the game right now, he is down to an 83. Uh, Matt Paradis, I don't think I'm going to bring back either. So I think I'm just going to hop straight into free agency and see who is available. So we have a couple holes we need to fill. I don't really think we have many on the offense, but maybe quarterback now. So weird, man. Very strange. $38.64 million. Uh, maybe we can draft a quarterback. I can try to go that route. Jair Alexander is available, and I really do want him. I'll probably sign him onto the team. Orlando Brown wouldn't be a bad option as well. Mike McGlinchey would be really good too. Maybe we'll go after him. I still do need a defensive lineman, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, though, Jair Alexander, I want on the team for sure. Let's try to lower this a little bit. Save some money if I can on him. I'm giving him a 73-point contract. I think he has a pretty decent chance at accepting that after the first week. And then I will go after some kind of offensive lineman here. McGlinchey is getting less points, so I'll try to go after him. I'm going to give him 83 points, and then let's check out defensive tackles. So I don't really see anyone here who I want. So I do think I'm just going to draft one. Seems pretty easy to draft defensive tackles this year. Let's hop into the next week of free agency, though. Did we get both of those players? We did. We got McGlinchey and Alexander. Okay. Both of those guys make this team a lot better. Okay, so now we are straight into the draft. I had auto scouting on the entire year, so I didn't waste any scouting points or anything like that. We have the 14th pick, but I'm pretty certain we have two, right? Yeah, we have the 22nd overall pick as well. Okay, so I'm looking for a defensive tackle and potentially now a quarterback. Now, the defensive tackles here don't look that great. There are a couple, like, pretty good guys who I could definitely start, um, but no one who is, like, insanely good. Maybe we go with, like, a defensive end. There's really good speed rushers. Holy crap. All of those right ends look incredible. Any, like, power rushers? There's one. Sterling Holmes, a mid-first rounder. He doesn't look that bad, actually. And sadly, we didn't scout this guy, but he looks pretty decent. I'll probably throw him on the draft board. Chad Webster. Okay. Let's check out the quarterbacks really quickly, too. We have one early first round talent quarterback and then three late first round talents. So not great. I wouldn't mind getting Casey Graham, but I don't think I'm going to trade up for him. Okay, so I think I'm just going to simulate now to pick number 14. I don't really want to bother trading up or anything like that. So let's see who was on the board here. Yeah, so I really don't know who to take. Like, I might be able to trade this pick away for a defensive tackle, actually. I might go that route because, like, I don't really like any of the players here. Okay, so I finally found a defensive tackle I can trade for. It's going to be Chris Jones. I tried so many different options, and I really wasn't able to get, like, anyone. So with this trade, I'm giving the Chiefs the 14th pick, Stevens, who we drafted last year. And sadly, I'm getting rid of Troy Pride, but we don't need him anymore now that Jair Alexander joins the team. Uh, so yeah, we're getting Chris Jones. He's a very good defensive tackle. He should help out this team a lot. And I guess now in like the late first round, I'm going to go ahead and take a quarterback. I don't know which one yet, but I feel like Herndon's going to be a little better maybe. I don't know. We're going to take him. Welcome to the team. 74, but he has normal. Now the question is, do I start him this year? I have no idea if I should start Mason Herndon. He has really good, you know, stats. He has good speed, acceleration. His change of direction is ridiculous. 94 in that regard it's just like i feel like teddy bridgewater can still play as well as he did that first season so maybe we have that guy play behind teddy bridgewater for a season but it's still a tough decision because that guy could also be insane right away and that probably will happen i don't know man i might just go ahead and start the rookie we'll have to figure it out but now i think i'm gonna go with a wide receiver this guy looks way too good not to take josh ross early first round talent five foot eight Welcome to the team. Five foot eight doesn't really matter, but still, he's on the team. 76, and he has hidden. Okay, well, this guy's gonna play. Yeah, he has 96 speed, 94 acceleration. Uh, yeah. That guy's gonna play a lot. He looks like a great player, and I'm excited to see what he can progress into. I have one player left on the draft board. I know nothing about him except for his combine grade, and I'm gonna take him, just based on that. He's a 69 with normal, so he's actually not too bad. That was a really nice selection. 79 speed, 88 acceleration, good strength, good finesse moves, good tackling and agility. Okay, 
That guy's actually not too bad. He's going to be a good backup defensive end. I simulated the draft after that pick. So we got a couple guys in the 60s, not too bad, I guess. Uh, this draft didn't go too badly. You know, we landed Chris Jones, technically, and then a couple other players. There is a 79 overall right end, Alan Weber, and then a 78 right end, a 78 left end, a 77 right end, a 77 left end. Jeez, this is a ridiculous defensive end class. Okay. All right, so where's that one quarterback? Also, a really good wide receiver class, but there's one quarterback who was supposed to go early first round, and it's Casey Graham. Sadly, he has a hidden development trait. That sucks a lot. I wish I would have taken him. He's also number seven on the Steelers. That looks weird. Um, but let's check out his development trait. If it's Superstar or X-Factor, I'm going to be very upset. He is a Superstar X-Factor. Wow, we missed out on um, a really good quarterback. When did he go? Oh, he went at pick number one. So we weren't going to get him. I wasn't going to trade up all the way to pick number one. All right, well, let's check out these other quarterbacks really quickly. Also, just look at this string of draft picks. So aside from this free safety, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven defensive ends who essentially went in a row. That is nuts. But let me find these other quarterbacks. So Mason Herndon's the dude we drafted. He's a 74. There's a 73 and a 72. Randy Childress. Hidden development trait. Of course we draft a guy without hidden. There are two other quarterbacks, at least in this class, with hidden development trait. Don't show me Superstar. Don't show me X Factor. Please, let me be happy for once. Oh, come on, man. Are you serious? We really got the normal development quarterback, and there are two quarterbacks in this class with Superstar X Factor. Please don't tell me this guy has hidden development trait as well. Okay, at least he has normal. But man, we absolutely missed. That sucks so badly. This guy could still play well, but that is a lot of pain. All right, so the hair might be getting progressively more messy, but the team is getting progressively better, okay? We're an 88 overall now, 89 on the offense, and I think it said 87 on the defensive side. So now we are starting this rookie quarterback. I was thinking about it a lot, and I think it's in the team's best interest to go with the rookie out of Arizona State. Now, like, Teddy Bridgewater is still going to be on the team. He's just going to be the backup. And I kind of feel bad for Teddy Bridgewater, but he really didn't play that well last year. He is going to regress this year. He's still like good and everything. Like I could probably trade him, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep him on the team for this next season. He's just going to be backing up the rookie. And I think this rookie can actually play well. He has an incredible supporting cast. He has Christian McCaffrey. It was a 99. Curtis Samuels a 92. DJ Moore is a 94. And then we have Ross as a 76 in the slot. This guy is really good, and I think he's going to develop well for us. And hopefully his development trait is better than just star, but I kind of feel like it, it is really just going to be star. The offensive line looks a lot different. Mike McGlinchey is playing left tackle. Proctor moved back to center, and then Greg Little is playing right guard. On the defensive side, then we added Jair Alexander. We have Chris Jones on the team now. The team looks very different than it did a year ago, and I think this team can definitely make it back into the playoffs. And I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. Okay, so the team seems like it's back on on the right track we are six and two five and two though for the buccaneers uh we are actually not in first place we are in second the saints are six and one and then the falcons are one and six so this division is very strong aside from the falcons of course um but let's check out development traits we have the one development trait for the wide receiver let's see if it is revealed yet he only has star that sucks, but he looks like a pretty solid player still. Hopefully he can go up in development after this year. The team looks like they're progressing well. Like this team's up to an 89, 91 offense, 88 defense. They should be back in the playoffs. Now I really want to get the quarterback training boost. So I think I'm going to wait to spend uh, my coach experience. But Brian Burns is a free agent and I would like him back on the team. He hasn't been doing it too well, but still, he's a solid defensive end for us. I do want him back. He's an 85. And Mac Wilson, I definitely want back. Teddy Bridgewater, I'm sorry, man. I'm not giving you a contract. Uh, Greg Little, I should probably bring back, and I think that is going to be it. Okay, so the team made it to the playoffs. We got another first round bye this season. We finished 12-4 and once again. It seemed like last year was kind of a fluke then. 10-6 and for the Bucks, 9-7 and for the Saints, 4-12 and for the Falcons. Is this quarterback the real deal? He may not have a good development trait, but let's see what he did his first season starting. And why is this so laggy? I don't get it. 4,600 yards, just about 39 passing touchdowns, and only 8 interceptions. He was certainly really good. That is amazing to see. Also, Teddy Bridgewater, one for one for a touchdown. If only it was for one yard and not five, that'd be great. Uh, but yeah, Mason Herndon was fantastic this year. Christian McCaffrey was also very good. 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns. Hardison, seven touchdowns. Mason Herndon gets three. 
Receiving wise, the rookie Josh Ross, 72 catches, 1100 yards, 11 touchdowns, 1000 yards for Curtis Samuel, 10 touchdowns, DJ Moore, 938 yards, 5 touchdowns, Ian Thomas over 800 yards. The offensive line looked a lot better than it was last year. 122 tackles here for Shaq Thompson. We have 18 tackles for the loss for Chris Jones, 16 for Brian Burns, who I think leads the team in sacks. He does with 11. Six and a half for Shaq Thompson, six for Chris Jones and Gross Matos. We have three picks for Jair Alexander, two for Mac Wilson, Shaq Hutchins, Jeremy Chin, and TJ Boykin, and then one for Shaq Thompson, Xavier McKinney, and Dante Jackson. We have no touchdowns or safeties, but Austin Landry gets a blocked kick. I don't even know who that is, but he's some rookie out of Akron. Okay. We were second in the NFL on offense. Maybe defense is finally like top 10 or something. We were fifth on defense. Okay, there we go. The defense is finally up there. I forgot to use my coach experience to get the quarterback upgrade, but I will right when I'm done going over who the MVP is. And it actually happens to be the quarterback. Mason Herndon is a rookie MVP. Let's go. That is amazing. Also, Baker Mayfield on the Saints is not fair. Um, but anyway, I'm so happy that the quarterback is going to win MVP. He is the offensive player of the year as well. Let's go. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. Shaq Thompson at number seven, though. Offensive rookie of the year, of course, goes to the quarterback. Josh Ross at number two. Defensive rookie of the year is Jonathan Biddle. I kind of feel like if that happened in real life, like a random quarterback with normal development uh, ends up winning MVP, I feel like Madden would make him a superstar the next year. Who knows, though? We're going to get the quarterback upgrade. We have 3,000 leftover experience. I can't really spend it on anything. Um, but let's advance by, see who we have to take on in the divisional round of the playoffs. Dude, I can't believe this quarterback turned out to be such a god. That's so cool. We have to take on the Seahawks, who are really good in simulation. Um, let's check out their overall. We should have a higher overall team than they do, but of course they have Russell Wilson, Jamal Adams, Bobby Wagner. They still have an incredible team. They're an 83, and we are a 91 overall. Same number of X-Factors displayed there. Let's advance by this week. Can we take down the Seattle Seahawks? I kind of don't think we're going to, but let's see what happens. Heading into the conference championship. I really hate how laggy franchises get the more you play them, but whatever. Uh, we lost that game 38 to 14. That sucks a lot, but we're going to go to the Super Bowl. And I'm going to go one more year. I need to see this quarterback in his second season. Let's see if he can win back-to-back -back MVPs. That would be nuts. The Packers and the Jags in the Super Bowl. Didn't really expect to see the Jags, uh, but the Packers are here again. Isn't that like their third time in the Super Bowl? That's nuts. Uh, but this quarterback should be up to star. Of course he is, and he has eight more experience points. Oh my. So he's currently an 81 overall, but, you know, 84th is morale boost. Good lord, this guy's going to be about a 90. Now, of course, I guess I'd rather have one of the guys with a superstar X Factor. Uh, but still, this guy played really well. Anybody else up in development trait? Sadly, no on the offense. Uh, but this side of the ball still looks incredibly good. And then defensively, Mac Wilson is an X Factor. Hutchins is up to superstar. And I believe that is all of the upgrades. But this team is going to be relatively the same heading into this next season. Uh, we just have another free agency period to look forward to, to maybe sign some other guys. I don't even really know who I want. Like, I guess I could use like a dominant tight end, but Ian Thomas hasn't been bad. Uh, let's see if the Jaguars can win the Super Bowl. That'd be really interesting if they actually end up winning it here. They do, 28 to 14. Okay, let's hop into the off season. We should have a decent bit of money to spend as well. Because of course we have a quarterback on a rookie contract. That's what you kind of look for in a Madden Rebuilds. We don't have any money to spend. I completely lied, <laughs> um, but let's see who is in free agency. Maybe I can go ahead and cut some guys to make some room. Fletcher Cox is available. Devin Singletary, David DeCastro. Okay, I don't really think I'm going to go after anyone. I don't really need anyone. There are some good players here, of course. But I think I'm just going to go to the draft. And maybe we can land some stud in the draft. I'm not really looking for anyone in particular, but I'll see you guys there. We are now here in the draft. And I just want to point out one player who looks way too glitchy to be in this game. Khalid Roth. He is six foot five, and he ran a 4'4", four, four, two. That is gross. He's going to have like 93 speed at being six foot five. That's not fair. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to take him. I don't really feel like trading up. Let's just simulate to my pick, which is all the way at the end of the first round. We have the 28th overall pick. I really doubt we'll get anyone, you know, great here of this selection. But once again, auto scouting was on, so I don't really know anything about this class. Uh, the Heisman was a strong safety but I didn't really want to trade up to take him or anything like that. He probably would have started on this team, the more I think about it, but it's fine. We'll make it work. Quick look at the safeties, and there's no one here who looks that good. I'm just going to look through the draft class, find someone who's supposed to go in the first round, and then just select them. Well, this guy looks insane, and I'm going to take him. 
Jaden Brown, welcome to the team. Early first round talent, let's go. 76 and he has hidden development trait. This guy is very good. 78 speed, 86 acceleration, 80 strength, 83 power move, 82 tackling, 85 agility. Yeah, he's a beast. Okay, so we just got more defensive lineman depth, which is always nice to have. And now let's simulate to my next pick. I'll probably just take this one and then simulate to the end of the draft. Okay, so here we are at the end of the second round. There are some quarterbacks I could go with and they all look awful. Is there anyone here who's supposed to be even like decent? There's a couple third round talents. There's a second round talent guy, Amari Dotson. Early second rounder. I mean, I guess I'll take him. He's probably the best player here right now. Actually, there's a first round corner. Let's go with him. Emmett Thomas. Welcome to the team. 71 with normal is my guess. 73 with normal. So a bit better than I thought. He's definitely not too bad. 91 speed, 90 acceleration, 93 agility. Okay. Not a bad depth cornerback at all. Uh, but now, I'm going to simulate to the end of the draft. Sorry I only took two picks, but, you know, I really don't need anything in this draft. The only position I probably could have selected, uh, you know, where they'd start would be like a strong safety. So maybe I should have traded up for the Heisman winner, but it's fine. But I absolutely need to go ahead and look at this receiver. This guy looks way too good, man. This should not be allowed. EA shouldn't be able to make players 6'5 with that much speed. Um, but we have a 67 middle linebacker. He's the highlight of, you know, the rest of the draft. But let's go ahead and check out the entire league. Khalid Roth, he has 93 speed. I was right. He has hidden development trait. He went to the Lions. So pairing him with Kenny Galladay. 90 acceleration, 95 jumping, 78 catching, 85 catching traffic, 84 spec catch, 82 short route running. This guy is ridiculous, man. Literally just chuck it up to him, man. If he doesn't beat the corner just by speed... He's probably going to beat him through the air. He only has star development, but that will likely change very shortly. That guy looks way too good, man. This is the Heisman winner, DeAndre Broyles. Let's go ahead and check out his development trait. Let's see if I should have traded up for him. And with the way this rebuild has been going, I probably should have traded up for him. We missed a lot of players who have had X-Factor, which does suck. He has superstar X-Factor. Okay, well, I probably should have taken him, but it's not the end of the world. I'm going one more year. That development trait's going to be super useful, but not as useful as it would have been if I drafted him like year one or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I definitely should have taken that guy. <laughs> yeah, so the team now is a 91, 93 offense, 89 defense. And, you know, I'm hoping this quarterback can go back to back for MVPs. That would be insane. The quarterback boost is now here. So he's going to go up incredibly well if he can win MVP again. I mean, he's already an 89 after one season, which is pretty absurd. Uh, but the offense looks really good. We have a hidden development right guard, Zach Smith. Okay, I'll take it. The computer drafted me that stud. That's always cool to see. But there really isn't like a weak point to this offense. I guess Ian Thomas is like the worst player here or like Alex Arma, but... You know, Arma's a fullback, and Ian Thomas is an 82, so he's not even that bad. On the defensive side, then, we have a ton of superstars. So we have three X-Factors on this side of the ball, and then just three other superstars. A bunch of stars as well. This team is in a good spot. I definitely think they can make it back into the playoffs. We are back in the playoffs again, and this time, we have to go up against my favorite football team, the Philadelphia Eagles. We finished 11-5 and this year on top of the NFC South. 10-6 and for the Saints, 8-8 eight and eight for the Falcons, 6-9-1 and one for the Buccaneers. Give me another MVP performance from this quarterback. Let me put it in the title, please. Allow for some clickbait, kinda. 4,465 yards, 41 at touchdowns. How many interceptions? 14. This is an incredible season once again. You know, 14 picks isn't great, but 4,500 yards, 41 touchdowns, I'll take it all the time. Christian McCaffrey, about six yards per carry, 12 touchdowns, eight touchdowns for Hardison. Also, Christian McCaffrey, almost 1,400 yards. Receiving-wise, Josh Ross is ridiculous. Ian Thomas has 11 touchdowns. Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, approaching 1,000 yards as well. Blocking the offensive line was tremendously good. Defensively, then, 111 tackles for Shaq Thompson. Tremendously good is a weird phrase, but I'm going to roll with it. 17 tackles for loss for Brian Burns, a 10 for Chris Jones. We have seven sacks for Burns, six for Chris Jones, five for Gross Matos, uh, four for Shaq Thompson. That's actually really satisfying looking. So we have seven, six, five, four, three, sadly another three, and then two, one. <laughs> That'd be really nice if, you know, Gabe Contreras got a couple fewer sacks or something. I don't know. But interceptions, we have three for Xavier McKinney, two for Mac Wilson, Jeremy Chin, and Dante Jackson, and then one for TJ Boykin. We have a defensive touchdown for Dante Jackson, no safeties. And we have a blocked kick from Gross Matos. Okay, not bad. We were first in the NFL on offense. Show me first on defense. I don't think it's going to be. 
No, seventh. Okay, well, we're getting close. MVP, give me the quarterback, please. I really just want to throw it in the title. No, he gets gypped. He's at number two. Baker Mayfield is going to win MVP. I hate you, Baker Mayfield. I'm still going to put it in the title. I don't know. I'll, I'll make some kind of use out of MVP. I don't, we'll figure it out. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Baker Mayfield. Mason Herndon at number two. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Donald because, of course, it does. Um, nobody from the Panthers. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Howie McCollum. Khalid Roth, that receiver stuck on the Lions, looking like a Calvin Johnson clone in a, in a way. 82 overall for him at the moment. Nobody from the Panthers. A defensive Rookie of the Year, Deontay Booker. We have Emmett Thomas at number six. All right, we also have Jaden Brown at number nine. Best quarterback is Baker Mayfield. Mason Herndon right behind him. Best running back is Saquon Barkley. Christian McCaffrey is at number four. Best wide receiver is Josh Ross. Let's go. He's up to an 89. Oh my. Best offensive lineman is Zach Martin, but we have Mike McGlinchey at number five. James Daniels at number seven. Best defensive lineman is Aaron Donald. Brian Burns at number six. Not too bad. Best linebacker is Chandler Jones. Best offensive back is Jalen Ramsey. Xavier McKinney at number 10. Best kicker is Dustin Hopkins. Joey Sly at number 10. Let's go. My man. Okay. Well, we finally have to play in a wild card round. Maybe we can finally win a playoff game as well. Kind of doubtful. The Eagles are kind of good. They're pretty inconsistent when it comes to Madden Simulation. Um, I've seen them go like 1-15, and 15, but I've also seen them go like 14-2 and two in the first season. So you never really know what's going to happen with the Eagles. But let's hop into this one. Let's see what the Eagles overall is. If I make it to like the conference championship, I'll actually hop into the game. But for now, the Eagles, we should have a higher overall than them. They have... This is taking forever to load. An 86 overall team, a 94 overall for us. Dude, this team is disgusting. Please tell me we can finally win a playoff game. This is going to be the final season regardless of what happens. But please tell me we can at least win a one playoff game. Come on. Let's go to the divisional round. Can we take down the Philadelphia Eagles, Carson Wentz and all? We can. 35-7. to seven. That's pain for me in a way. If that actually happened, I'd be very upset. But happy for me right now because we crushed them. That's great. Now we have to go up against the 49ers who are pretty good in this game as well. They're an 86. We're still a 94. We should have this game. We have a ton of coach experience, but there's not even really anything to spend it on, to be honest. I have most of the training boosts, so I'm just not going to worry about it. Let's go to the conference championship. Can we take down the 49ers? We can, and we have to go up against the 12-4 New York Giants. Before I hop into this game, let me actually upgrade the team. We won 52-10. to Jeez, we've let up 17 points so far in the playoffs. That's ridiculous. But let's auto-upgrade the team. See how high of an overall we can get to. Only two players were upgraded there. But anyway, the Giants have actually a really glitchy team in this game. I think it's mainly because of Saquon. Like, Saquon's ridiculous. And he's up to a 99 for sure. Of course, an X-Factor. Um, they probably don't have that high of an overall, though. They're probably like an 84, 85, if I had to guess. They are an 87. Never mind. They're actually up pretty well. But let's hop into this game. Looks like O'Shane Zimenez is up to superstar development or something. That's pretty cool. Let's see if we can win. I don't really have... Too much faith against the Giants. Because like I said, the Giants are super glitchy. I do think they're going to win, but it'd be sweet if we can make it to the Super Bowl. All right, so the game is tied right now 7-7. Seven to seven. We had a really long rushing touchdown. 14-7, to seven, another long rushing touchdown. 21-7, to seven. I think that was a passing touchdown that time. Score again, 28-7. to seven. No, okay, 24-7, to seven, not bad. 24 to 14. We have a pretty convincing lead at the moment with how much time is left. 31 to 14. We're going to have this win. So 31 to 21 will be the score of that game. We're going to hop into the Super Bowl. Let me see what Christian McCaffrey did because I think he had two like 80 yard touchdowns. He had 159 yards, about 10 yards per carry. That's ridiculous. He only had one touchdown actually. Someone else had that other rushing touchdown. But regardless, we are hopping into the Super Bowl. We should have a superstar quarterback now heading into this game, which is really cool to see. But let's advance by and see who we have to take on. This has been a really dominant playoff run so far, and we have to go up against the Jaguars. Okay, but let's quickly take a look at development trade upgrades. The quarterback is up to superstar. He's also about to be a 96 with his morale boost. This team is disgustingly broken. Okay. Brian Burns is up to superstar. Xavier McKinney is up to superstar. And I also think our third receiver is up to superstar. This team is cracked. Just beyond belief. This team is insane. But let me actually check out the development traits of a couple of those hitting guys. Because I'm going to forget. I'm definitely going to forget. Because I'm going to end the video at the celebration. Zach Smith. He does have star. Okay. So he's not a bad backup option. And let's check out this defensive end. He has star. Okay, it was actually already revealed. But now let's hop into the game against the Jaguars. They probably have a lower overall than we do as well. They have an 89. We have a 94. 
let us win. Let me get a Super Bowl with this team. I definitely think they deserve it. 23 to 10. We are winning quite well right now. 23 to 13. We have a 10 point lead. 26 to 13. Could be 26 to 20. It's not going to be 26 to 16. 29, 35 to 16. We just destroyed this postseason. None of these games were even really close at all. So that's awesome. We're going to win a Super Bowl in the final season here. Let's check out who Super Bowl MVP is as we look at the same exact celebration that has been in Madden for the past like four years. I wish they'd at least change this. Kind of annoying. But regardless, you know, the team is freaking out. We won the Super Bowl. It's amazing. I think this team was incredibly good as well. Like, we drafted so many really good players. We traded for some beasts who developed really well. I mean, Mac Wilson developed into a superstar X Factor, which is pretty ridiculous. Uh, but let's check out Super Bowl MVP. Of course, it's the quarterback. He didn't even have that good of a game. But whatever, it works out. 202 yards, two touchdowns, and a nice completion percentage. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Definitely one of my more successful rebuilds. I'm not sure exactly who I'm going to rebuild next. I guess let me know in the comments if you made it this far in the video who you'd like me to rebuild next. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. This is where every step you take is to or die. Where